Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Central United Church. My name is Barkley Walker, and I am the chair of Church Council. And it's my privilege to welcome you here this morning on this beautiful first Sunday in October. I can't get over the beautiful sunshine and the warmth we're having today. A little breezy out there to keep things uh, feeling like fall, but overall, it's uh, nice to be here. Uh, just a couple of announcements to highlight in our bulletin. First of all, uh, for anyone who might be seeking uh, new membership or to uh, join the uh, United Church of Canada, uh, please contact the church office. There is uh, an opportunity to do so in the coming weeks, and we will be having a service to uh, celebrate uh, new membership uh, coming up later on in October, early November. Our Truth and Reconciliation uh, vigil was held here Friday night. And we had a nice attendance. Uh, Union and K are a lovely young duet uh, group that came and uh, performed for us and uh, really did enjoy their music. Uh, so much so that I'm going to have to go and uh, get some more information about them from their website and uh, add them definitely to my playlists. And finally, today we celebrate uh, World Communion on uh, Sunday. And so everyone, we uh, invite you to join us in uh, with the table, and you will see that later on in the service. Let us prepare ourselves for worship. calls us to live in respect with and care for all our relations and creation. For thousands of years, indigenous peoples of the area, the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and neutral peoples have tended the earth, and we give thanks for such diligence. We covenant to live and work together as long as the sun shines 
the grass grows and the river flows. God calls us into this time of worship. Christ, you are the vine, the fruitful tree, connecting life. Christ, you are the bread, daily partnership with life. Christ, you are the light illuminating all creation. Christ, you are the way, guide our feet, for you are life and truth. We sing together our opening hymn, The Earth is the Lord's. These are new words uh, by Carolyn Winfrey Gillette. The tune you will recognize, it's immortal, invisible, God only wise. And the words are to celebrate this time of creation, highlighting the gifts of God and the earth belonging to God. Let us sing together in this time of creation. Sustaining God in these days of turmoil and challenge, when we have learned already that more change is possible than we wanted to cope with, we ask for the liberation of your joy in all times and all circumstances. And we give thanks for your solidarity even before we grasp the tasks ahead. Strengthen us to speak boldly and with our fear that we might actually be heard. Laugh with us as we re reassess what we held to be wisdom, to enjoy the humility, the urgency, the pride in your friendship. For all we knew has changed except your faithfulness and your love spoken in flesh for the <coughs> earth. Amen. Good morning. 
Our scripture today comes from Lamentations chapter 3, verses 19 to 26. The thought of my affliction and my homelessness is wormwood and gall. My soul continually thinks of it and is bowed down within me. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Thanks be to God for these words. Lamentation seems to be a very popular verse for hymns. Great is thy faithfulness is, what, is one we sing, and new every morning is the love. We, we sing that one as well. So very popular, and a lot said in just a few lines. But what we meet at the beginning of Lamentations, and it's important to read Lamentations publicly. Often we don't because it's full of sadness and weeping. Well, if there wasn't sadness in weeping, how would we know how wonderful it is to be laughing and having joy? We need both in order to balance life. And weeping recognizes that those of us in the congregation aren't, are sometimes going through some difficult stuff. So there's a whole book dedicated to weeping and lamenting because it's important to do. So what we find in this chapter in Lamentations is this loneliness, this homelessness that's being spoken about, this weeping bitterly without comfort, feeling betrayed. Because the people of Judah, as we know of, as modern day Jerusalem, the people are in exile. There is no resting place for them. The roads mourn. The priests groan. The young girls grieve. And the foes have become their masters. So this is the description of what is called in Lamentations the daughter of Zion. So Judah, Jerusalem, is known as the daughter of of Zion. So in the first lines of the book of Lamentations, they are poetic words uttered in the aftermath of the great tragedy that befell Judah, the daughter of Zion, in 586 BCE. It was then that King Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians destroyed the city. And this was also the destruction of the temple, the place where they worshipped. And they exiled a good portion of the population to Babylon. And the poet expresses the pain and desolation of one who likely experienced firsthand the destruction and the death that characterized those barely imaginable days of suffering, loss, and despondency. So the poet's words strive to explain the tragedy. How could this happen? And the answer, according to the writings of Jeremiah in particular, which we have been reading in the past few weeks, it's because of sin. God has wreaked this destruction on them because of their infidelity to God. <laughs> and in his prophetic voice, as we have been reading, predicted disaster. 
Because this view of infidelity to God is written in scripture, it should not be ignored. Not accepted, but not ignored. And to be engaged. The Hebrew scriptures represent ancient Israel's testimony regarding how their people, and we're talking about 586 BCE, understood their lives and their experiences and their relationship with God. And so we address this testimony in light of our own experiences and our understanding of God. To say that disaster is or suffering is caused by a person or a group sinfulness is wrongly deployed in light of our understanding of God's grace. Yet in our society, there is still that remnant to blame all sorts of victims. This is the time when there is tremendous amount of destruction in the world, famine and flood and hurricane. And during the devastation in New Orleans a, few, a number of years ago now by Hurricane Katrina, the American evangelist Franklin Graham suggested that New Orleans was particularly targeted because of that city's iniquities. Could we even possibly accept such a statement? Could we place, and I'm going to make up this word, Deuteronomistic verdict. So these were the um, prophets in the, in the Deuteronomical age. So Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy. So in this period of these prophets, they, their verdict was that disaster hit Jerusalem and brought these difficult situations. And could we say today that these same kind of prophetic announcements face our communities in the world? So if the poet of Lamentations and other writers of this Deuteronomy era imagine death and destruction and exile to be divine will, for the poet writes, for the Lord has, Lord has made her suffer. Does that mean we have to do that as well? Should we today focus only on the sin and injustice of the ancient people, which the writers believed brought the wrath of the divine? And might not the disaster that happened in Judah and a host of other cities and states in West Asia at the hands of the Babylonians also be interpreted the same way? So Jeremiah, for instance, insisted that although God used Babylonians to punish daughter Zion, Jerusalem, then that would mean that, the, that God would eventually punish the Babylonians for their wickedness too. So there is a conundrum in the book of Lamentations. Since the writer accepts the moral interpretation of the events of 586, but also seems to contest it. Because the punishment to Jerusalem they received did not fit their crime. They write, look, O Lord, and consider to whom you have done this. Should women eat their offspring, the children they have born? Should priest and prophet be killed in the sanctuary of the Lord? And in her appeals to God, daughter of Zion also sounds a distinct theological note emphasizing not God's anger at sin, but God's divine mercy. And writes, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. 
they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So if Judah sinned and then the Babylonians destroyed the nation, then the prophets like Jeremiah concluded the one caused the other. Well, they were right about Judah's covenant failures, of course, but no one could deny the destruction that Babylonians wrought. But were they right that God sent such terrible destruction on Judah because of sin? Certainly earthly kings who are betrayed have and do act with such punishing vengeance. Look what we're seeing in Russia and Ukraine. But do we think the same of God? So the discernment between a person or community's relative state of well-being and their moral status, eh, I say it's best left to prophets. But we learn from lamentations that faithfulness are serious matters that demand our attention. As we've been hearing this week during this time of truth and reconciliation, the sin of residential schools, the Indian Act, the stereotyping of any people is wrong. And as settlers, we should not be tempted to discern other people's circumstances as their moral shortcomings that might produce their state. But what we are to hear from this reading is the daughter of Zion's confidence that God's mercy never comes to an end. May it be so. Amen.
Um, we are going to prepare for communion, and the way we will serve communion is that the Christ will partake with uh, the uh, meat and the uh, Which on the top. <laughs> there we go. So I'm going to ask Barclay to help and then we will begin. The words will be written, written for you. They're also in the bulletin, I think, and there's just a few places that you will um, participate that are highlighted in bold for you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks to our God of all creation. It is right to give God thanks and praise. You spoke the word, and all that in heaven and on earth, all things came to be. Your spirit hovered over the primal elements, and you brought forth life in forms innumerable, including this, our fragile earth. And we amongst its inhabitants, as our past is in you, so our hope for the future rests with you. As we have turned from your way, so we turn again to the warmth of your love. Through you, all things are brought to new life, and now we give you thanks for the glories of your creation given into our care and for the opportunities we have to share that richness with all your people. And so with the wonders of creation and the songs of praise of all your creation, both in heaven and on earth, we praise you now and forever say, Holy, Holy, Holy God, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. The work of human hands, the gift of the earth. And he gave thanks to God. And he broke the bread to speak to us of the breaking of his body upon the cross. He gave it to his friends and said, Take and eat, for this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He took the <coughs> wine, also the work of human hands, gift of the earth, and he gave thanks to God the Creator. And he poured out the wine to speak to us of the pouring out 
of his blood. He gave it to his friends, saying, This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for all creation for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink of this wine, do this in remembrance of me. So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, God, who, we who seek your reconciliation, we who need reconciliation, one with another, we who hope for reconciliation with all creation, draw close to this mystery in being broken, spilt, and buried. Life sprang forth again. In the breaking, there is an opening. In the spilling, there are the roots of sharing. In death and burial, there is the seed of a new life to come. As we look in our world, in our lives, and in our hearts for his second coming, keep us close to this vision that we have seen. Through the giving in the bread and wine, reconcile us to our world. Give us the broken oneness, the spilt unity, the buried resurrection, by which we can restore your creation and fulfill your will. Send upon us and upon all your creation the life-giving spirit who first moved upon the waters of the deep. Stir in us the creative and redeemed the destructive. Unite us with the, and through the body and blood of your Son, your word made flesh, as your word has made flesh, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the new unity of the creative spirit, with all that has been, is, and will be in your universe. We stand before you and worship you, God of all in songs and everlasting praise, through him, with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. We offer our prayers for ourselves and one another. O oh God, remember your holy church throughout the world, and reveal your glory among the nations. Save your people and bless those who belong to you. Shepherd them and carry them forever. Remember our families and friends and surround them with your steadfast love. Remember those who are sick, those who suffer pain or loneliness or grief, those who draw near to death, and those whom we name in our hearts before you. Comfort them by your promise. Grant them your peace. And now rejoicing in the communion of the saints, we remember with thanksgiving all your faithful servants and those dear to us who serve you in the glory of heaven. Keep us in unbroken fellowship with your whole church in heaven and on earth and bring us at the last to the joy of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ. We believe strongly in the power of prayer here at Central, and we offer those names of people that have asked us and requested us to pray for them. We continue to pray for those that are affected by COVID-19 worldwide. Be with our frontline workers, our health workers in hospitals and care facilities. This week we pray for Mary Emery, who's experiencing health issues, Marie Faduk, who is having knee replacement surgery this week. We also want to lift up a good friend whom we have lost as we learn of the passing of Timothy Woodhead. 
Tim died this past Wednesday. For several years, Tim was our piper. His talent enhanced our Remembrance Day worship services. Our sympathy is extended to his wife, Madeline, and sons, Sean and James. The flowers in our sanctuary are in memory of Shirley Emberly, who we, Kemley, who we buried yesterday. And this week we continue to pray for the following people. Jessica, Hendrika, Joanne, Mary, Lori, Ron, Deanna, Bill, Sheila, Bob, Colette, Louisa. And we give thanks for Rahim, our World Vision son in Bangladesh. The flowers that our flower committee place in our sanctuary are to the glory of God and in memory of Dorothy and Earl Brown, Sylvia and Albert Tamori, Elizabeth Tamori, Kay Smedley, Elizabeth and Zoli Kenyo, and Ruth Henry. Remembered in love by Stephanie and Ross Brown, Jennifer, Jamie, and Isaiah Parker, Todd, Suzanne, and Gwendolyn, and Tori Brown. We lift up these in all our prayers as we offer the words that Jesus taught his friends. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the table of Jesus Christ. All is ready, and all our
Gracious God, we give you glory, thanks, and praise for the dying and undying love of our Savior Jesus Christ. In your goodness, you have brought us into communion with him and with all who love him and made us heirs of your everlasting kingdom. By your grace, may we continue in this holy fellowship and live to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Believe it or not, you are the answer to someone's prayers. When you share your gifts today and every day, you bring hope and comfort to people. Thank you for giving generously now and through your PAR and the funds that we receive through many of our community here. We now receive our morning offering. Generous and loving God, help us to see where there is a need and to fill it. Bless these gifts in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is um, our communion hymn, One Bread, One Body. If you want to join and see it in the hymn book, it's at 467 in the Voices United in Your Pews. And also the words are on the screen for you.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Namaste. Amen.